G'day guys, well we're back again here at Rob's house working once again on the Turbo Tunner. Now, if you've been around the channel for a little while, you might remember a video a while back where I said this. And in saying that, we are not mechanics. You'll, you'll, you'll figure that out. And well, although I kind of hoped I might have stuck around a little bit longer before I tripped over my own dick, well, it's official. We are idiots. <laughs> Mel Black! What Mel Black? <laughs> so, when we did the piston to valve clearance, um, you may have seen in the other episode, I'll probably drop the clip in here, that we saw the valve hitting the piston. Reason being is that when we did the PTV clearance, all the advice that we were told was you talk the rocket to spec. But the issue that we have is we used a solid lifter, not a hydraulic lifter when we did the PTV to try and get us some more accuracy. But when you do the PTV with a solid lifter, you want to start with zero lash. So that means the push rod is sitting on the lifter, it's sitting on the rocker and there is and the valve, but there is no preload on the system. Now, when we had talked the bolts to spec um, as if we were using a hydraulic lifter, the valve was already sitting off the seat when we started the test. So that gave us a false indication. Um, when we've redone the test at zero lash, we've had heaps of clearance, heaps and heaps of clearance. Um, but we did get in touch with Shannon at TuneCorp, who will be the man who will be tuning this combination, and discussed the head with him um, and because those ones have been decked with the higher compression knowing that we want to run pump fuel on this combination we've decided to go with a stock ls1 241 casting head anyway so so you can see here we have uh, stock 241 heads we've already changed the c4b stainless valves they've been lapped onto the heads and we've put the BTR valve springs on. Um, so they will be ready to go on shortly. And Rob is just finishing up at the moment with our rocker trunnion bearing upgrade. So we just need to put the circlips on that, get those rockers done, and then we'll get back into reassembling the engine. So heads on, uh, push rods in, rockers on, intake on, and then we will start working on the front which means we'll need to prime our oil pump as well as fit our timing cover and accessories. And with any luck, we're going to get this thing fired up today. So hang with us. We'll get started. guys so as you saw there we've got both of the heads on push rods are in rockers are on i've got this exhaust manifold torque down rob's just doing the one on the other side there um, and we do have to turn the motor over and get the lifters off the cam lobe so that we can torque these rockers to spec so we'll do that a little bit later um, but for now you can probably see just there in the depths down there there is a bolt head an allen head bolt um, we need to get to that one there yep that's him and pour oil down there basically to prime the oil pump so that's as per melling's uh, instructions to get to it you did have to pull off the alternator you can see that we've got the alternator just laying down there um, but that's what we'll do next then we're going to move our focus over to the front of the engine 
and we're just going to pull like the cam bolts out and just put Loctite on them and torque them for the final time. Um, as well as the oil pump bolts, like the mounting bolts, just uh, those ones and those ones. And then we'll be able to put the front of the motor back together, which means we'll start putting the accessories on as well. Just going to show you what we did last night in preparation. Obviously, in the next instalment, we'll be doing some turbo things. So we have put an oil drain here in the timing cover in preparation. We do need to put a new front seal in. But you can see that's just a 5 8 NPT 90 degree. And we'll be using a barb on that to run our oil drain hose to it. So that was one that we did last night. It's just tapped in and cut flush at the back with a bit of JB weld just to little bit of extra security but that should be good as gold um we'll just have to run a blank on that for now until we put the turbo on which will probably be in the next episode anyway that's enough of me chatting let's get back into it i'll show you how we get on So we're just, you can see we just put the front cover and that back on. We're just mounting the alternator back up and we've noticed that where the oil drain is going to be going, we've got a little bit of a clearance issue, but it's not too bad. Um, we're literally just going to cut a big relief out of the alternator bracket there, um, which isn't going to affect the structure of it at all, but then it'll allow us to run the oil drain um, through that bracket there. So yeah, we're just going to quickly do that one and then we'll keep going with this reassembly. Things are actually going really well. How happy are you, Rob? Yeah, it's uh, a bit scary. Things, <laughs> things are starting to look really good. We've done something wrong, but it's gone too good. <laughs> so, yeah, once we've done that, we'll put the balancer on, uh, water pump, and then we'll be moving up to this stuff here at the top. So then we'll need to, like we said before, rotate the motor so that we can torque the uh, rockers to spec. You can see we've done that trunnion upgrade. We used a mace engineering kit. Um, so that gives us a captured needle bearing um, and a circlip. So that eliminates the issue that you could have with the GM um, trunnion bearing where if the case failed, you had a whole bunch of needle bearings going through your motor, which is not ideal. So thanks to mace engineering, we've got um, a good Australian product in there which solves the problem and yeah from there it'll be dressing the top of the motor and getting this thing ready to rock and roll can't wait all right so we finished our clearancing on the alternator bracket so that has way more clearance there for our oil drain um, which is going to be sitting just there and then we realized that we didn't have any five eight inch uh, oil resistant hose so that kind of stopped us from putting the alternator back on and then the water pump um, because the auto shop has closed about 20 minutes ago <laughs> Murphy's law but 
it's okay. What we're going to do is we're now going to move on to setting the torque settings on our rockers um, and then we will put the intake on and start buttoning up a couple of like the wiring harness bits and things like that. Um, and then first thing in the morning when the auto store opens, we are going to get some 5 8 inch oil resistant hose for our turbo drain so that we can blank that off. Um, and put together the front of the engine so that we can get this thing to fire. So let's get stuck into that. guys so the gopro just ran out of memory space a few minutes ago but you probably didn't miss a hell of a lot so you can see here that we've got the intake on and that was where the gopro ran out of space um coil packs are on fuel rails are on wiring harness is all run so all that's left to do will be first thing tomorrow we need to get ourselves some 5 8 oil resistant uh, hose for the turbo oil drain and put the alternator, water pump, um, all that on. And then we're just about ready to hit the key. So we will see you guys first thing in the morning. Well, g'day guys, new day. Let's get stuck into this thing. There you go, the car is back on the ground for the first time in a little while. It's got oil, um, it's got water, we are just or double checking the oil level and that now, but soon we'll be getting ready for the first fire. Before we do that, um, what we will be doing is unplugging the coil packs and taking out the fuel pump fuse just so we've got no fuel and no ignition. Um, and we'll just turn it over on the starter motor for about 20 or 30 seconds and just make sure that we've got oil pressure before we do fire it. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that bit off camera and then I will chuck this back on the tripod and we'll bring you the first fire up. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter how many times you've put together an engine um, or you know how much work you've done in the past, 
the first time that you hit the key on an engine that's just been put together, you will kill yourself every time. I guarantee it. Doesn't matter if you've done it a hundred times, I bet you engine builders that do this every day still get nervous. Well, that's it. So we just turned it over a couple of times. Rob is all of a sudden become a religious man. <laughs> um, so the battery is a little bit dead. We did get a few turns out of it, so we should have some oil pressure or flowing. It might be a little bit noisy on first startup, but that is to be expected. So we just put the fuel pump fuse back in and we've just plugged the coils back in. So what better time than now? <laughs> Plug the battery in for a little bit, we've got a bit more charge. We're gonna have attempt number two, and this is like a proper first startup, not a YouTube first startup, a proper first startup. <laughs> this, this, this is some virgin territory. This is the business, and we're gonna make it happen. We ready? Do it. have it see the smile on that guy's face he is so happy <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like this. <laughs> so it sounds pretty evil for a turbo cam really we were expecting <laughs> it to sound a little bit more mild than the old cam but it sounds pretty tough it's choppier here's yeah. I'll just I'll drop it in here there's the old cam and the new cam So you can see there's there's a little bit of a difference. We were expecting the turbo cam to be a little bit more sedate, but it does still <laughs> sound pretty choppy, pretty tough. Sounds angry. Yeah, that's it. So I just want to do a bit of a recap on what we have done here. So we started out with a 5.7 litre C4B uh, with a basic cam upgrade <clears throat> and the heads were decked 50 thou. The, what we've done since is we've taken off the C4B heads and we've used a stock LS1241 casting so that we can lower our compression. Uh, we used ARP head bolts to secure them down. We used the C4B stainless valve, so we lapped them into the 241 castings that are on here now. Uh, and that's using BTR double valve springs and we used a Mace Engineering trunnion bearing upgrade kit um, on the stock rockers. So that will just help us in case later on down the track one of the bearings fail, we shouldn't have the needles go through the engine. Uh, we used a Rollmaster timing chain kit, so that was a Rollmaster Red single chain. Yes. Yep, adjustable. Uh, a Mellings high pressure stock volume oil pump. One, uh, you want the number for that? 10295. 10295. We weren't sure, we've heard a lot of people use Mellings oil pumps when they do the turbo thing, but uh, we weren't sure which part number to get, but after a lot of research, 10295 is the one that you want. So, good oil pump. Well, Highly recommended. Well, it's the one that we want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we've changed to the LJMS Stage 2 turbo cam with LS7 lifters and the BTR chromoly push rods. So, the old cam, for the guys that want the nerdy specs, um, was a 223-234 duration at 50 thou lift um, with 112 degree lobe separation 
uh, and 580 thou lift. The new cam, the one that we've just installed, is a 226 231. Um, so it's got a little bit more duration on the intake and a little bit less on the exhaust. Uh, it runs a lobe separation of 113 degrees with 4 degrees advance ground into the cam, um, which is good for a turbo application. Uh, lift on this one is 605 on the intake and 598 on the exhaust. So we're running a fairly substantial amount of extra lift compared to the other one, um, which is why we wanted to do the piston to valve clearance check to begin with. Um, which was a total disaster, but we managed to fix it. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can hear, the engine started on the first hit. It cut out just because of low voltage, basically. Um, the batteries didn't have enough charge. We hooked the charger up for a bit longer, started it up, and it runs uh, sweet. Uh, it runs beautifful. Uh, it started on the first hit, idles beautifully, everything's loves. mint. Yeah, we couldn't ask for anything more, really. It... Definitely tested us, the car. Um, Every step of the way. Just silly <laughs> things as well. Like um, we had one of the rocker bolts strip the head. Bef from, not yeah. from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like one yeah. of the rocker bolts was stripped. So that took us a long time to sort out. Um, just things like taking the oil pickup off without taking the motor out. That was a bit of a struggle as well. Yeah. Just, just time-consuming stuff. One spark plug. Uh, yeah. yeah, one spark <laughs> plug was not playing the game. Um, just there was just little things that you can't really capture on camera, and things yeah. that would just be boring for you to watch, basically. But we've pretty much spent four full days working on this. Obviously, if the heads weren't going to be an issue, um, and we didn't have to disassemble the heads that we had just swapped the valve springs on and then reassemble <laughs> them into other ones. We probably could have done this in maybe two and a half days, which for people who, uh, I mean, we're literally doing this on Rob's patio with his toolbox. Yep. Um, if we did it at my place on the hoist with a couple of extra tools on hand, we might have got it done a little bit quicker, but honestly, I don't think we really would have done much better. The time that you lose is when you you're missing that one little bit of hose and then yeah. you've got to go to the shop yeah. and come back and there you go, you've wasted an hour. Yeah. Um, it's little things like that. So and I we think did that a bit. There was a couple <laughs> of times, yeah. So just things like we didn't have the right harmonic balancer puller, so we had to go and get one. That wasted an hour. Um, when we had to go get some 5.8 hose for the oil drain, go to the shop, come back, there's another hour. So if... You're a little bit more organised, I guess, and a little bit more experienced. You could you could do this in a weekend. Um, oh, the other thing that we had to do, just caught my eye, to do this um, setup with the turbo and that, you need to go to a VZ radiator conversion as well. So that was supplied to Rob by Northcom Wreckers, and that, they were really good to deal with as well. But that's got the thermo fans, the VZ radiator, and that does away with the overflow um, setup. So that's where our turbo was going to be living. So. But I tell you what, be living all right. it's going to be good. So I hope you've been enjoying the build series so far. I hope you've enjoyed some <laughs> tips and tricks that we've given you. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, don't be sure. <laughs> Get down there, tap the button, and make sure you hit the bell if you want to hear when the next episode is uploaded. Do you know why? Make because our pain worth it. <laughs> <laughs> the next episode, we're doing the turbo. Yes, the yes. turbo tunner is finally getting its turbo. It's being modified at the moment, actually, so we'll yes. hold out on the specs on the turbo for now, but it is being modified at the moment. We're going to get it back in a couple of days, but the next time you see this car, we will be putting the turbo on. So that's pretty much it for now. We're going to enjoy a nice cold can of Coca-Cola and relax for the day. And say thank you to our wives for <laughs> us totally ignoring I, uh, them for the I, last couple of days. I have some brownie points to earn. Yeah, definitely. But um, that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. And until next time, we'll catch you around.